What is the best video editor for beginners? That is a question that I see all the time below my videos, on my Facebook group and everywhere on the internet. And there are a lot of good answers to that question. But one of the major problems are usually that it either costs money or it's too complicated or the learning curve is simply too steep to get started. And this is why I'm going to show you CapCut. CapCut is by far the easiest and most affordable video editor that is available out there. But don't get fooled by that part because it actually packs a lot of advanced functionalities that will allow you to do some of the stuff that only can be done with the more advanced editors. Me personally, I have been using Final Cut Pro for a long period of time, but I'm a Mac user and this platform is not available for other than being using on a, yeah, sort of my iMac and MacBook. But CapCut is a free alternative. And the beautiful part about that is it's not locked to any platform. It's actually available both on your mobile phones, it's available on Mac, it's available on PC, and it is also available in a web browser, if you can believe it or not. So in this way, once you have learned the software, you can basically transition between the different platforms and it's very easy for you to do that. All of that is free of charge. You can buy some premium features, but you get a lot of stuff packed into the software as part of uh, the offering. And no, this video is not sponsored by CapCut. The user interface is, at least from my point of view, very intuitive and user-friendly. And it will allow you to do very simple tasks as well as advanced tasks. Of course, it can't do all of the stuff that you can do with the advanced editors. Once you have learned the basic editing skills or techniques with CapCut, it will be very easy for you to transition to the more advanced editors. The key features I'll be showing you in this video is uh, cutting, trimming and rearranging your video clips. How to add transitions between your clips, how to use text and sticker overlays, how to add music and do audio level adjustments, an easy way of adding speed ramps, as well as how you can do auto captions uh, by the click of a single button. And you will be able to get started right after watching this video as the software will be available through the link in the description below. So without further ado, so let's get on with this beginner's tutorial to show you how you can edit your first video. This is the main interface when CapCut has been started. Let's start by creating a project by clicking this bar on the top that says create project. And now we will enter the main interface of the software. And that is pretty empty as it is right now. So let's start by importing some footage and I will show you what it can do. We do that by pressing the import button here that will launch a finder that will allow us to locate the footage. We are going to use some drone footage that I shot the other day when I was out traveling with the drone club. So what you need to do now is to mark everything that's located inside the library and then press import. So now you can see that all the footage that we're going to use for this edit is stored in this kind of media bin. And this is a nice selection of video clips in horizontal, vertical. There are some photos and there are some music as well. So now you basically have two options how you're gonna view the footage. You can go to the top here and you can select either to view it as a grid, as we're doing right now, or you can select a list that will basically stack all the clips on top of each other like these similar length bars. And I can go in on each clip and I can simply just move the mouse on top of the clip to preview what is going on inside the clip and I can preview it through the preview window that's located in the center of the screen. If I don't wanna use the mouse, there are shortcuts available that will allow me to yeah, preview a clip. So if I just select the clip and place the playhead somewhere where I wanna view the footage, I can use the shortcuts L to scrub forward in the footage, K to stop it again, and J to scrub backwards in the footage. In this way, I can basically review what's going on in the things that I've been recording. Which of the two views that you prefer is up to you. Let's just switch it back to the grid view. I prefer the grid view as this gives me a better overview of the total amount of footage that I'm going to use for the project. When the footage is playing back in the preview window, you have some options available. You can see there's a counter that's running here in the lower left corner. The green or magenta one that shows you where the playhead currently is. The white one that shows you the total length of uh, the video clip. 
in the center there's a play and pause button that will allow you to stop and start replaying of the footage. On the right side you have a magnifying glass that will allow you to zoom in on certain elements of uh, your footage. So you could say, okay, I want to make it, maybe I want to take a closer look at this house while I'm flying next to it. I have the option to do that. I also have the option to replay everything in full screen. So if I want to take a closer look at the footage just to evaluate the quality, that's an option too. This window that right now says details shows you the details about your project. And you have the possibility to modify your project by pressing uh, the modify option here in the lower right corner. And uh, you can start by yeah, renaming the project. I want to call it Tre Kroner because that's the fortress that, that the, the footage that we're looking at is uh, originating from. I can uh, not change where it's going to be saved to as a project as it is right now. So that needs to stay. I can decide if I want to copy the media to the project or I can decide that I want to have it to stay in the original position. For now, we will just let it stay in the original position. If you plan to move your project, it might be a good idea to copy the files into the project. We want to do a video that is 16 times 9, so we got to keep the 69 aspect ratio. The resolution that will just stay as recorded, most of it is in 4K anyway. The frame rate will stay at 30 FPS. And the color space is Rec 709 SDR. That's something that you don't need to mess around with if you have yeah, used the standard coloring options uh, that is offered by the camera that you're using. And in our case, this is our drones. And I press save. And as you can see, the changes apply. So now we are basically ready to start our edit, which will be conducted on the timeline that is the lower part of the screen. This is basically where you're going to be doing the majority of your work and the upper three windows, they're basically just supporting whatever you do on the timeline. Let's start by adding a clip to the timeline. And that can be done in several ways. You can either select the clip and then press the plus sign and then it will jump into the timeline automatically. We can add another clip, but maybe we don't want uh, the full clip to be imported on the timeline. That's where we can use the shortcuts again. If we play the clip, we can press I for in and we can press O for out. So now it's only a fraction of the clip that is sort of selected in the media bin. And if I press plus, that will jump into the timeline. The clip will be added where the playhead is positioned on the timeline. And when I'm saying the playhead, the playhead is this bar, this white bar that I can move here back and forward. So if I put that one in the back here, so if I select a fraction of this clip that I want to add, again using the I for in and O for out, and I simply press the plus here, then it's being added next to the playhead where that is positioned in the timeline. So that part is pretty easy and straightforward. There's by the way, a selection of shortcuts. If you press here in the upper right corner of the screen, you can see all the shortcuts that is available for the software. In the beginning, I will show most of what I'm doing using the mouse. But once you have started working with the software, you will really appreciate the shortcuts that will allow you to do a lot of stuff without even taking your hands off the keyboard. So right now, if I play back these clips, they are all recorded without any audio. But I also have clips in here that have audio inside. So let's just select one of those. This is part of a tutorial. Oh, yeah. we need to take that into account when we are flying out there. So I have something here that I want to add. I want to put it in the end of the timeline just for the sake of this demonstration. So. I have my selection here and I press add. So now I will get the clip that contains an audio track added to the timeline. So uh, we need to take that, that one into account. So you can see the audio track below the video here that is shown with, as these waveforms that you have here. And you can adjust the volume up and down on this uh, slider. We just leave it around zero for now. And now you can see all the clips are basically occupying more than, than I can see on the timeline. And that might get a little bit confusing if you're starting adding a ton of clips. So what you can do now is you can basically press this ruler here and that will make all the clips fit inside the viewport of your software. You can also adjust the zoom level 
If you want to zoom in on certain details that you want to watch or modify, this is also an option by using the slider here on uh, the right side. So what I've done now is I've made a rough selection of clips that I want to use for this short intro for this uh, drone club trip that we just conducted to this uh, Trekrona fortress. So let's just use the, the ruler just to squeeze everything inside uh, the view so we can see all the clips at once. And as you can hear, the computer is struggling a bit. We might be able to take off some of the load by going on the modify here and go under performance and then select proxy that will allow us to get clips in a lower resolution so the computer does not need to work so hard to keep up. So let's just do that. But that will also maybe influence the quality a bit when we're working with the footage. So now I have a nice selection of clips that I want to use for this project. Now I need to work with each individual clip and make sure that it is like I want it to be. If I just zoom in on the boat clip here, that might be a little bit too long, that sequence. So I want to cut it to the right length. And there are several ways of doing that. One of them is using the splitting tool that will be available if you press this option here where it says split. So if I press that one, it will simply split the clip. So it's basically two parts as it is right now. So now I can use the J, K and L options to scrub back and forward on my timeline. And let's say that um, I want the clip to be, yeah, approximately this length. I will stop the playhead here. And again, I can select the splitting tool here, or I can use the command B option, and then you can see the clip will be split. So I basically have the original clip divided into three sections as it is. And as I only want the middle part, I just select the outer ones and then I press delete on the keyboard and delete on the keyboard and they're gone. Let's say that you have regretted the cutting of the clip. You can easily undo that. There are undo buttons over here that will allow you to yeah, move back and undo any of the cuts that you have done to your footage. But no, it's sequential, so they will be undone in the reverse order that you did them. So let's say that uh, you basically want back end to be longer of the clip. You can simply just select it and then you can use the mouse just to drag it like this into your desired position. There are a few shortcuts that will allow you to do this cutting even faster than I just showed you here, where you don't need to lift your hands from the keyboard. So if you basically go to this position, let's say that uh, we want to cut a little bit of the beginning of this clip, I can simply press Q on the keyboard, and then it will delete everything that is on the left side of uh, the playhead. So see, now that part disappeared. And I can do the same thing on the other end and erase everything that is on position on the right side of the playhead if I press V on the keyboard. So see? That was very, very easy. That was a very easy task to cut down this clip. And as I mentioned before on uh, the player up here, that is right now playing the footage that we have on the timeline, you will be able to see by the Suyuan indicator or counter here, you will see the current position of the playhead. So you see if I move it, you can see the counter goes up and down. So if I put it like in the intersection between these two clips, you would say that it's positioned in 21 seconds and the total length of the clip is 45 seconds. Those are important parameters to know because if you're aiming for a certain length of the video, you might want to know this information already now to get an idea how much you need to reduce the footage. Maybe it's easier if I show you this on an audio clip. So let's see here. There's a lot of silence oh, here in the beginning nice. of the clip that we want to get rid of. So if I position the playhead here where I want my clip to start when I start speaking, I press the Q. So we see, oh, press the playhead, I press Q. So you can see it removed the part before I started speaking. Oh, that is super nice. The problem is that the wind Then we just listen to, to what I'm saying. Direction. So I have da, 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 da. on the way out. And against all that I've been teaching here on the channel, <laughs> I have to fly against the wind when I'm going back home. And we don't want the rest here. Just for this example, we'll take that one away. So we press uh, the W, you see the back part of uh, the clip disappeared. It's the wind when I'm going back home. So now I'll just go through all the clips and just see that I only have the parts that I need for the project using this cutting technique. A good rule of thumb is to try and keep your clips around four to eight seconds and then change the angle 
Otherwise the viewer will get absolutely bored. So once you're happy with the duration of all your clips, you can try and select an individual clip and then something interesting will happen. You will gain access to the properties of each clip that will allow you to do some pretty hefty modifications. There's actually some pretty advanced stuff available here that you only see in the more expensive paid editors. The quick toolbar on top of the timeline that also changes and will give you some options that are tied to the individual selected clip. If we take a glance at the, the window here or the properties for the clip, you could see that there's actually quite a few things uh, yeah, possible here. You can scale the clip, you can uh, change the position of the clip, you can uh, rotate it if that's something that you're into. There's a lot of options uh, that you can play around with. There's even keyframes that will allow you to perform these operations or modifications to the clip, depending on where you are located on the timeline. That's probably a little bit more than uh, you want to digest right now in the process of learning this software. But we can revisit that in a later video if you want that. So let's just use the control set to bring the clip back to its original shape. There's also the possibility to mess around with speed ramping, something that's super, super popular when you are talking drone videos at least, to speed ramp everything into like a fast motion into a certain position. And that's also very, very easy to apply to each individual clip. We simply just press speed here, and then maybe we will take like a, yeah, a flash in thingy. You will see now it's modifying the clip. So, whoops. So it's doing something like that. You probably also noticed when I selected the clip, a lot of options are becoming available here on the quick tool menu. The first one is the, that you can reverse the clip. You can basically mirror the clip if you want to do that. You can, uh, yeah, very fast uh, rotate it or you can simply crop it in. Let's say that you want to focus on a certain part of uh, the image, maybe this table here. You can just do that. So now we are zoomed in. In this way, you can do some very easy modifications to each clip. What I really like about the CapCut editor is that it's a multi-track editor. That's something that I'm used to with more advanced paid solutions. So that's something that will allow you to do stuff that's way more advanced with a single linear editor. This basically means that you can stack footage on top of each other. So let me just show you how that works. So I have a clip here and I simply just select it and then I drag it on top of uh, the timeline. So right now you can see that the new clip has been stacked on top. Let me just show you by selecting another clip here. So if I put that on top here, you can see it's the clip that's on the top that's being shown. Let's say that I want to remove a track. I simply just select the clip that I've added and then I press delete and then the track will automatically disappear and be re-entered once you stack another clip on top of everything. You can Change the size of uh, the top layer. If you do that by using the scale function here, you would see that the layer that is below that's being revealed on the background. And I can also move the smaller <laughs> resized version of uh, the top layer. I can move that to any position here on the screen. I can resize it, whatever I want here. So that's a super nice feature, something that I use very, very often when I edit the videos here for the channel. So the overlay is much longer than we need. So let's just cut a little bit away of this by using the W option. Oh. By selecting the clip and the W option. So it shortens it down to the length that we need here. So that one stays on top here. So I can take my overlay and I can move it to any position here on the timeline. Let's say that I want to have it here next to the boat here. So maybe the position of uh, this overlay is not the ideal one. So I want to move it to this position. I think you get it for this uh, demonstration uh, purpose. So now I have the timeline and uh, maybe um, it's not in the exact order that I want. So I want to reposition stuff so it comes in a different order. Maybe I haven't recorded everything like on a timeline, so I need to rethink the strategy of my video. And maybe I want the talking part to appear after this, this uh, boat part. And the way that I do that is I simply select the clip and then I move it to the position where I want and let go. And now the talking part comes directly after. All of that is super nice. After the boat part. So you can shuffle around with this if you want. Also, you have some options uh, that is a link to each track where you can basically lock the track 
So you cannot, if you modify something here below the video, everything will stay in place. You can hide it, so it's not even visible. So if you somehow want to rewatch the layer that is below, you can simply hide it like this. You also have the option here where we have audio oh, present. You have the option to mute the audio. So if you don't want to listen to the part with the audio all the time when you're editing it, you can simply mute it by using this option out here. So that will give you some options uh, to play around with. So now your basic edit is in place and it's time to spice up things. Maybe you want to add some text. Let's say that uh, you want to describe uh, this fortress, what it is. So let's just zoom in here so we get this clip selected. And the way that you're going to do that is you go to the top menu here and you simply select text. And here you will have an option that's called default text. If you press the plus here, you would have this bar jumping in next to the playhead. And you can shorten it up and you can do it in the length that you want so it fits your needs by simply pulling it in one end like this. And now you can go in here and you can correct the text and we want this to be called Tre Kroner for, for, to, uh, Fortress. And we can position it maybe here in this way. And I can do all the basic modifications by selecting uh, this uh, title clip uh, gaining access to the clip properties. So let's say that, yeah, maybe it's not so pretty, but let's <laughs> just select this one so you can oh. see. So now I've added some static text to one of the oh. clips, but you can extend it or move the text so it basically extends into the next clip if you prefer that. Maybe this kind of static text is a little bit boring and you want to add some uh, yeah, animated fonts or something that makes it uh, spice it up a little bit. There's a lot of possibilities to do that. You simply just go down to the text template option here. You see there's a lot of stuff here and you can select all sorts of different ways of, uh, of adding text. And the technique is uh, exactly the same. You might need to download uh, the option that you, you want to use, but let's just for the sake of it uh, try this minimalistic one. So, see this one? Animates a text across uh, that screen. So we again, we go in here and we say TR Kroner for Fortress. I think that was correct. Put it in the right length here and uh, we want it to appear here in the lower part of the screen maybe a little bit here to the side so it would look something like this so you see that's very easy and you have a lot of options that's included uh, with the software again by selecting the text overlay you gain access to all the properties for the text so you can modify it to your likings another thing that you can do to spice up your footage is to add transitions between each clip and the way that it's implemented is actually pretty smart so you can by just hovering over the thumbnail you can see the effect what it actually does if you select it it will actually show you uh, on the your footage on the timeline so if I select this one and I do this one again, so I can actually preview what it's doing to my footage before I even apply it. So let's say that I like this uh, whoosh and I want it. I simply press the plus and then it's being added to the cut that is closest to the playhead. So if I put it like this and I want it again, so you see now it will add it to this cut between these two clips because my playhead was closer to this cut than it was to this cut. So if we just play it back here, back home. so we see it's swoosh and swoosh. Very, very nice and very, very simple. But do pay attention and don't go completely ballistic with these uh, transitions as it might ruin your video project and make it look very amateurish if you over exaggerate it, like using explosions and stuff like this. Let's just try that, but just for the sake of it. <laughs> I can select the transition if I want to get rid of it or replace it and simply press delete and then it's gone. And now we have this explosion thingy and we will put this one in and so we see. <laughs> That's not super nice, but at least it shows you the principle what you can do and you have a really, really huge selection of transitions that you can play around with to spice up your video project. Again, I can uh, select the transition and in the window here on the upper uh, right side, I'll gain access to the properties of uh, each transition. 
So a fast glance at the menu here on the top, you will see there's a lot of other options available. There's stickers, where you can put on a sticker. Oh. A sticker like this. So I don't know, maybe I want an arrow in here so I can just download it. And I can have an arrow in here and I can see how what that looks like uh, on my footage. I'm not really sure that I want that. There's also the possibility to add certain effects. I can uh, do like a shake. So if I take this one, you can see I can shake my footage so it looks like it's earthquake. <laughs> I can do this TV on thing. And it's really nice that you can preview each of these uh, effects before you actually apply it. So, edge glow, I don't know what that does. Yeah, that adds uh, a glow to the edge of uh, So you can play around with that. There's also um, the caption option. That's a really, really strong one. Really, really powerful one. That's where they can do some really magic stuff uh, that you would appreciate because it can actually do auto captions. So if I go in here and I say add captions there, so I, uh, I can select the different languages there. So I select English and I do generate. And now it's thinking a little bit. So it's generating for the clip that I selected. So see. All of that is super nice. The problem is that the wind direction is uh, basically. So now I'm getting a <laughs> subtitles directly on uh, my video just by the click of a single button. It's not perfect because I'm not a native English speaker, so it actually misses some of the words in between. But it's very, very easy. You just select the headline here and then you can go in and you can correct whatever words has been spoken wrong. So that's super nice. We can also modify oh, that is so modify the headline here so or the subtitle so we get some oh, of these popular nice. fonts. The problem is that the wind direction that you have been seeing if you have been watching social media where they sort of subtitle the videos by using a, something that makes the video really stand out. That's a super nice feature. There's a, an option to add filters to your footage. You can add. Let's just go here to this section. You can add filters here. Again, you can simply see what it's doing by uh, downloading it and holding it on top here. You can see what it's doing to your clip. So again, there's a lot of uh, possibilities, almost too many possibilities. <laughs> and the crazy part is that this, this software is free. It's really, really crazy. There's some adjustments that will allow you to do some basic color adjustments uh, to your clip. So let's say that you want, uh, I don't know, you want, for some strange reason, you want to desaturate the footage here in the middle of uh, everything. So you simply just take this adjustment layer and then you can take the saturation, you can bump it completely down. So it's black and white, so see. And that is just related to this uh, layer that I've put on top here. So if I hide it, you see, we have the original colors of the clip. So I can do a lot of uh, changes to the clip here and I can uh, make it apply across multiple clips if I want that. So that's super nice. There's also a lot option for those of you that uh, have been flying drones for a long time. You would know that uh, sometimes you get a flat color profile uh, that will uh, allow the drone to capture a lot more details in the footage, but you need to post process it afterwards. So you would have to go to the, in this case, the DJI website, and then you have to download a lot that is suited for the drone. And that one can be applied by using the lot option that's available inside CapCut. You are getting a lot of options here, that's for sure. So now you have finalized your edit and everything is uh, super nice. You have added some nice transitions. Uh, you have added a nice, uh, some nice fonts. You have done some color adjustments and you are more or less happy uh, with your basic, uh, yeah, edit. But your work is not done yet because you might be able to keep the attention of the viewer. Oh, that is super nice. The problem is that the if you have a talking part where you're conveying a message, but the parts where you're just flying with your drone, you need to add some sound design to that part to keep the attention of the viewer. And for that part, you need some music and some sound effects. CapCut has decided to include a really huge selection. I don't know if it's a huge selection, but they have included a selection of audio tracks that you can use on your video. I do not really recommend that you use those because you're not sure that those are copyright cleared for all the social platforms where you're planning to use your project. So what I would recommend is that you source your own music tracks 
through a provider where you make sure that you control the full process and you don't run into issues. You know, if you get three copyright strikes on YouTube within 90 days, you will most likely lose your channel. You need to take that part very seriously. But they have also included a, an array of sound effects that you can use. And I will not be so scared about copyright problems using uh, the sound effects. It's more related to the music tracks. So below the music option, there is a sound effect tab that will show you all the sound effects that are available within CapCut. And you see they are nicely organized into trending, transition, horror, mood, and et cetera, et cetera. Let's just go to transition here. to so see if there is something here we can use. Maybe there's a swish. I don't know what that is. Let's just... So that's a very popular sound. So let's say that I want uh, to add a sound effect here. Then I simply just place the playhead in uh, the intersection between the two clips. And then I simply take, uh, yeah, let's take the whoosh here and just put that one in here. So let's see how that sounds. Something like that. Maybe the timing needs to be adjusted a little bit here. <laughs> like that. So this way you can spice up your sound design a little bit by adding some of these sound effects uh, that will help yeah, convey the message uh, in the video. For the music part, I would take full control of this and only use music that I've sourced through a reliable source. And I can go in here under import and I already have a music track prepared here. So I can just go into this folder and in here I have a yeah, a music track that I can use. So let's say that, uh, yeah, we want to put that from the beginning of the video. I simply go here and then I press uh, the plus sign and then the, the music track is being added below um, the track. And I can shorten it up a little bit here, like this. And I can place the playhead here in this position. Let's just zoom in so you can see what it is that I'm doing. So I'll place the playhead here where it goes into the talking part. And then I will simply use the W, select this one. So I will take away the part of uh, the track that is on the right side of the playhead. So now I have my music part here. And as you can hear, this is way louder than the rest of uh, the things that we have in here. So I can adjust this in two ways. I can either manually adjust it here by pulling uh, up and down on this line that is on the audio track, but there's actually a quite clever way to do this. I simply select the clip and again, gaining access uh, to the properties. And in this case, it's for the music track. And there's an option here that says normalize loudness. So if I take that one, it will basically, yeah, slow down or quiet down the music track. So it fits the audio that's used in the remaining part of the video. So, so. And what I would do if I have a talking part, I will extend it so it goes a little bit into the part where I'm talking. And if I just expand it a little bit here, I will use a fade out. So the way that I fade it out, I can either add it up here through the slider here, or I can go down here directly. That makes it visually a little bit easier to determine how to do it. And then I can drag it to this position. So I'll get something like this. All of that is super nice. So I get a nice transition between uh, the video clip and uh, the part where I start talking. And we want some uh, audio on the uh, yeah, final part of the video here. So we just put the playhead like this, and then we go up picking uh, the part here, and then we can adjust it when we add it. So again, Press the plus and then it jumps in here and I can see that I want the fade out here like this, maybe something like this. So I do the same thing again. I shorten it up to a little bit before the clip starts, select it and then I use normalize audio and then I do a fade in on this side as well. So we have something like this I, against the wind when I'm going back home. This uh, edit is probably not going to make it anywhere other than in this uh, video, but this is basically the principle that I'm using when I'm editing my videos is that I'm mixing and matching uh, like this, adding a few transitions, doing some overlays uh, on top of a talking part. So the only thing that I would have done different if it has been one of the videos that are normally published on the channel, I would have used a lot more overlay on the talking part. So it's not just me that is standing talking to the camera. So I would use some uh, B-roll 
which is the non-talking part and added that on top of this just to emphasize what it is that I'm saying. Apart from that, this is basically how I edit the videos that I publish here on the channel. And now you can do that too. <laughs> Not publish it on my channel. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just show you how you get the video out and you do that by uh, pressing export up here and that, then you will have this window and in here you can yeah you can rename the project if you haven't done that before you have a chance to do that now you can select where you want to put the final video you can select the resolution that you want to use for the render you can select the bitrate you can use recommended you can use high you can use low if you use a high bitrate, you will have a larger file size, but you would also have a better quality video. And if that's not a problem, I would always choose higher. You have uh, the codecs that are available. You have ones here. If you select some of these Apple ProRes 420, <laughs> then you would see the file size, size that will increase by a factor 10. So using the, the this efficient compression space saving HEVAC, or what is called HEVC, that is probably going to do it for most of the stuff that we are doing for social media. Uh, H.264, that was the old format. If I select that one, you can see uh, it's not updating here. It's actually the same file size, but that I would have expected that that would create a much larger file. At least that was the reason why this new efficient compression saving space format was introduced. We just keep it like that. We keep it in MOV. We keep the frame rate at 30 FPS. And that's basically it. So if I press export now, it will try and convince me if I should do something like uh, your video is saved to your desktop or laptop and you can share it now. I don't think that it will do it that fast. But right now it's trying to convince me that I should share the video directly on TikTok and YouTube. And uh, if I just press cancel here and do it again, it does that sometimes. So if I skip that part, so see this is what the render would look like i think what we would see we'll just check that when it's done rendering the video that there would be two samples there right now so what it's actually doing is that it's rendering in the background and then it offers you the chance to share the video directly to youtube or tiktok and this is also why i think the audio track or the music track that's being offered inside uh, the platform that is actually cleared copyright wise for TikTok and YouTube, but it's not necessarily cleared for Facebook. You can see uh, it's, it says right now that the duration of the video is 31 seconds. It's 122 uh, megabyte in size. So now we can open the folder. You see, yeah, that was. <laughs> Let's just uh, do it like a list. Oh, view here, list, list. So we have the two videos that uh, we just created. We just replay it here. All of that is super nice. The problem is that... So, so once I've done with my editing, I can simply just go to the menu up here and then I can say back to the home page. Then the editor will close down and you will get back to this starting window where we created the project. And you can see that the project is stored here in the front. So you can continue editing it later if you decide to do so. So this was my basic introduction for CapCut. Maybe you have a lot of uh, questions or maybe there was stuff that was not completely clear throughout the video, then let me know in the comments below. And to the concern that people might have that this is Chinese software and they will steal your information, da 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 da. Maybe if you're flying a DJI drone, that's not such a big problem. <laughs> I hope you liked this video. If you did, then feel free to give it a like. If you didn't like it, feel free to press the dislike button twice. Thank you for watching and I'll be seeing you around.